rough week for the banking industry. The collapse of Silicon Valley Bank. They just came in and told us that the bank just shut down. It's the second biggest bank collapse in U.S. history. $250,000 is a ton of money to us when you're talking of eight figures within the bank currently. The 16th largest bank in the United States has just fallen. So in this video, I'm going to cover how not one, but two banks collapse affect the commercial real estate space. Now before the collapse of the Silicon Valley Bank, there was actually one other bank that fall right before it. That bank is called the Silvergate Corporation which is a financial institution heavily involved in cryptocurrency. Both Silvergate and SVB have similar reasons for collapsing, and that is a classic bank run. A bank run is when large numbers of customers withdraw their deposits at the same time for reasons like the fear of the bank is about to fail. For Silvergate, the crypto bear run in the second half of 2022 and its ties with Sam Bankman-Fried of FTX led to depositors withdrawing their money. If you didn't know, banks hold a lot of their money in treasury bonds, which is known to be the closest thing to a risk-free financial investment. But here's a problem. Silvergate and SVB bought these bonds when interest rates were close to rock bottom. As you know, interest rates and bond prices have an inverse relationship. So when interest rates fall, bond prices goes up and vice versa. When both banks needed cash to cover the depositors, they sold their bonds at the worst possible time. That's because now interest rates have gone up dramatically. That means they sold their bonds at a massive paper loss. Both banks would have been fine if they held their bonds to maturity because they would have received the face value of the bond plus interest. But because both banks didn't predict that the feds would raise the interest rates as fast as they did, plus they needed cash to cover all the withdrawals, they were forced to sell at a loss. Silvergate halted operations in Wednesday, March the 8th. And while all of this is happening, Silicon Valley Bank was experiencing problems of its own. In the case of SVB, startup funding was beginning to dry up, but operational expense and payroll still needed to be paid. So companies were drawing funds from their reserves. SVB began selling off some of its assets to cover the withdrawals. That move was meant to calm the markets, but instead, it triggered more investors to pull more of their money out of the bank. And in one day, $42 billion was withdrawn from the bank. On Friday, March the 10th, the FDIC took over Silicon Valley Bank. Silicon Valley Bank was a country's 16th largest bank in the United States. As of December of 2022, SVB's deposit amounted to $173 billion. This was the second largest bank to fall after Washington Mutual back in 2008. So how does this all affect commercial real estate investing? Some say that banks will increase the interest rate spread to hedge against the risk. If that actually happens, it'll be even harder to find a deal that will fit current lending terms. In the commercial real estate space, lending is very important because almost all properties are acquired through leverage. As a passive investor, it's more important now than ever to invest with experienced operators. These operators are still able to get favorable terms with the bank because of their ability to execute the business plan. Experienced operators will also have access to off-market deals because brokers will tend to approach them first before listing it in the market. Another point to consider, prior to the events of last week, the chances of the feds raising the interest rates to 50 basis points in March of 2022 was at 80%. Now it is down to 0%. Wall Street is betting that the feds will raise the interest rates at 25 basis points instead. This has been an interesting year so far, and we still have nine months to go. As of now, the Treasury and the Federal Reserve have stepped in and bailed out Silicon Valley Bank. Whether or not you were affected by the collapse of these banks, we can still draw lessons to help us prepare for what's coming in the next couple of years. After all, real estate moves in cycles. So all we have to do is look at the past and see familiar patterns that are happening in the present. And I've compiled the best practices on what to do once you've identified those patterns in this video right here.